ki khubor ka baate si TV. Lawan Rashapi da ka Frank Motors. Visit Frank Motors or call seven zero four five two zero seven nine seven three. MIT University of Meghalaya. Our admissions are now open for the academic year 2024-25. Explore our best courses. Experience global collaborations. Apply today. Step into paradise at Mount Saint Telang Nongwar. Your sustainable escape into nature's heart. The head of Department of Jog Oncology Department at Civil Hospital Shillong, Dr. Anisha Molong, cleared her because she lamik halia kwan baar habrok way kari India. Ya gajing don jogi break bio ya gajing pang cancer, ne gajing pang bampong. Ha gajing ekran bekila patai kubor ha kalai trip jemang araja pausau. Dr. Anisha Molong, kelapin tip ru because she lamik halia kwan ha kekadan mendingkong eh habrok kari India. Ha kwe day because gajing don jogi bio bio pang cancer, ne gajing di ne bam duma. Kali itu huru bagai kum kejengwat dunia jang ke Indian Council of Medical Research, Hamid Halia, kisah orang kebio ia kejeng pan kanser. Kilang arspa arpunyo point kendai ngut nak kisilak ngut kina shongshong, bagi kintai kilang cispa kat pra point rungut nak kisilak ngut kina shongshong. Kau doktor Anisha kali kintu jadi pas bah bagi day benuan syakmat benpa le examen si sen hak lais nem benlap lagi dana air mik kejeng pang bampong hak amet jangki. Nampar bala lagi doktor kilap kloy ia kejeng pang kejeng semaru kan long kebasok. Developing cancer in the citizens of our state, in males it is one is to five. So just that's very thing, and in females it's one is to nine. So it's very high. In fact, uh, we lead uh, today mainly our topic was uh, CA figures. We had discussed about cancer figures, where Meghalaya tops the country in cancer figures, which is the cancer of the food pipe. Now and also, we have the highest number of tobacco-related cancer. Meghalaya tops the country in tobacco-related cancer, where in male we have 70, it is 70.4 percent, and in female it is 46.5 percent. So that's that's how grim the uh, situation of our state is with regards to cancer. I guess many of our patients who can afford and who can come down, you might be getting a lot of our patients coming for treatment there. So uh, it's just not about the rural population. It's also the urban population also, which is uh, you know catching up with this disease. And uh, as also we know, hypertension and uh, uh, diabetes, they are also silent cancer uh, killers. But also cancer in our state is also a killer. So the state government uh, has now, we have uh, set up the cancer wing in Civil Hospital Shillong. Uh, it is a 90 bedded facility and uh, we, we have only radiation oncologists actually managing the whole cancer setup in the state. Uh, we have no surgical oncologists, we have no medical oncologists. Uh, we hope in the near future uh, our young doctors would take up you know, this uh, field, surgical oncology, medical oncology. So actually basically we're quite overburdened because we're also managing medical oncology for solid tumors, the radiation oncologists themselves. So and with the case load that we have, even having 90 beds, we still have patients on the floor. Like almost 30, 40 patients are on the floor. So that's how bad. And that is just about patients coming forward for treatment. And we have two cancer hospitals in uh, Shillong, uh, both in Shillong. Uh, one is in Civil Hospital Shillong and one is in Negrims. Uh, regarding the radiotherapy setup, of course, Civil was uh, hospital was the first hospital which had the radiotherapy setup, which was Cobalt 60. And uh, that was established almost 18 to 20 years back. And uh, recently, uh, in the past two, three years, we've been trying to get new machines. And uh, yes, I think many of my friends in the press have been repeatedly asking me, you've been saying your machines are coming, machines are coming, but then it's not happening. But yes, this year it's happening because the order has been placed. We're getting a linear accelerator. We're also getting a brachytherapy, a CT simulator. So I, I hope this year it happens. Uh, and also Negrims already has a linear accelerator and brachytherapy functioning. So we are treating patients with the cobalt therapy right now. But again, I would still stress on this. It is not about the machines that you have. It is the skills of the treating team, right, which is most important. We might have the best machines, but if the skills of the, the treating team is not up to the mark, nothing will change. 
and uh, the government now has embarked on a journey for prevention and awareness uh, for early detection of cancer and as we know that there are many projects programs happening in the state on a mission mode you know we have the maternal and infant mortality uh, missions where we are trying to reduce the maternal and infant mortality in the state which is also very high then uh, we have lots of uh, things so even in cancer, we have uh, developed a mission that is the Meghalaya Cancer Prevention and Early Detection Mission, where which I had mentioned in the conference. And uh, we are going to take this all, uh, throughout the state in all the districts. We're going to train our staffs to screen at least all the eligible population of the state for cancer. So, you know, I had just done a pilot uh, uh, study, kind of, uh, when we started last year, November and December, we started in October and we went to all the district headquarters for screening uh, cancers. And of course, the public turnout was very less because people are still scared of being diagnosed with cancer, right? But even of the little people that we had uh, screened, uh, we had screened in all the, we have 11 districts in the state, and out of that we had screened 1,093 people. And out of the 1,093 people, we got 15 confirmed cases and 71 suspected cases. And out of these 71 suspected cases, when they came to civil and got tested and all, uh, we got 40 positive. So a total of 55 out of 1,093. And that is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, where we, I'm telling you, I'm just, it's just the district hospitals we went to. People did not come forward, just 1,093 from of the total 11 district. But still, out of that, we got 50 uh, plus positive cases. So, uh, through, through the press and media friends, I want you to please communicate this, uh, that it is so important that we get screened for cancer. Uh, it, and other diseases also, but cancer is killing our state. So I, I urge all our uh, fellow citizens to please just come forward and get yourself screened once in three or five years, you know. And if you belong to the lotus, it's just once, right? I think once in five years. And if you belong to the highness, once in three years. So at least you can catch cancer at the early stages where treatment is possible, right? So that is my message to everyone. So I think our public should actually appreciate the government who is investing, you know, on such a big initiative. Why? Because the government knows that cancer is a disease which is preventable if detected early, especially in our state. So like as uh, Dr. Sayan and Dr. Arindam had said, ki, uh, uh, back in their places, I think cervical cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer, brain cancer, right? More common. But in our state, I am telling you, it's all related to this where the food goes down, yeah, aerodigestive. So right from here, our cancer starts till the stomach. Very common. So we have, we the, the state tops in laryngopharynx, hypopharynx, and esophageal cancer. Uh, cervical cancer, I would say, in the past few years of my practice was not so high. Of course, in female, it is the highest, but not the rate is not as high as in the metropolitans. But in the recent uh, uh, few uh, years, say one, two years, our cervical cancer cases are also coming up. And the reason being, uh, we have multiparity in our state. A lot of uh, children, a woman, uh, uh, especially in the rural areas, a woman minimum would have six, seven, eight ch uh, children. And also <coughs> have uh, multiple sexual partners. That's also a big problem in our state. You know, uh, every now and then uh, they change their... Uh, it's not... Uh, it's, I'm not saying it's from prosperous uh, society. We're not that. But it's, uh, you know, uh, yeah, not restricted. And with the number of children, you know, the cervical, the cervix gets eroded, you know, very short gap of childbirth. Sometimes our women, every year they give birth, you know, they have not even completed the breastfeeding cycle of the first child and she's already pregnant with the second child. So, you know, the body doesn't recover, the cervical damage, the, you know, inflammation, everything that happens also has not recovered and she's already in the process of delivering another child. So that also, I don't know, maybe in the next few years, cervical cancer also would come up uh, in our data. But for now, it's all related to 
uh, food habits and our way of uh, uh, eating. So uh, this is what everyone should know that it is a big initiative being undertaken only in our state. And as I repeatedly say that uh, we will expect, you know, we might become number one in the country after we start this program because we'll be detecting a lot of cancers. But the curve goes up and we will come to a certain stage, right, where we will start going down. I hope in the next 10 years, maybe, right, we'll start. But expect our, our state to top. Once we start this project, maybe we'll top the country in, in the whole cancer thing. Now it's Izol, uh, Mizoram topping for males. And uh, for female, it is uh, Arunachal, Parampara district of Arunachal, uh, number one. So we might top the list very soon, but uh, with the support of uh, all, all of us and the citizen and the government, we hope that we can make a change and people realize huh, uh, that it is so important huh, to get screened, not only for cancer, but also for other diseases. Uh, the most common cancer is esophageal cancer, both in males and females in our state. And uh, next would be the hypopharynx and laryngeal cancer, the neck cancer, head and neck cancer. So when I say one is to five, the probability, this is already a, uh, established data which has been come out from the ICMR. The probability of from five citizens of Meghalaya of one developing cancer in male, Okay, and female one is to nine. So basically, uh, we talk in this fetal cancer and everything, both in male and in female. Huh? So, so fetal cancer and head and neck cancer. And there is no surgical intervention here yet. Uh, no, we are doing. The problem is surgical intervention is when you are detected early. But the problem with most of the patients, not only in our state, I think yours also, is patients come at such a late stage where surgery is very difficult, right? It has already spread to other organs or it has already uh, invaded other <coughs> adjacent tissue where it is difficult for surgery. So that is where only radiation and uh, chemo uh, comes into play. So, but we do surgery. Uh, in our hospital and civil, uh, we don't have a surgical oncologist, but we have a, a, a surgeon. Uh, we have uh, two, three surgeons who are trained in surgical oncology, who have gone to Negrins, who have gone to TMH Mumbai for training for three years, and are doing the cancer surgeries. Uh, and in Negrins, we have two surgical oncologists who are performing the cancer surgery. So we have inter-hospital referrals. And of course, why I'm talking only about the government hospitals because of affordability. You know, half of our patients are from, are from the rural background who have no financial support. So that's why. But in the private sector also, we are in Nazareth Hospital, you have a surgical oncologist. In Nazareth, uh, Nazareth in uh, Bethany, you have. So, Slowly, I think our state is picking up. So, but then uh, surgical oncologists, as such, we only have two surgical oncologists in the state. So, but then at least uh, I hope our surgeons are slowly getting trained and uh, trying to, you know, get into the thing. So, let's hope that things improve. And medical oncology is where we have a big problem because, uh, I mean, uh, Sai would agree with me. Once we have a linear accelerator. For a radiation oncologist to manage so many things will become very difficult because we have to, for one patient, we have to sit on the uh, treatment planning system for almost two, three hours for to do the treatment planning, which is like where the presentation today was called formal radiotherapy. So it's very difficult, but we will try our best. You know, we're here to serve our people. We have uh, taken oncology as a subject, but I pray that we have a medical oncologist soon in our state to help us. I've done in most hospital like, because uh, compared to a colon surgery or a stomach surgery also, uh, esophageal surgery will be done in much fewer centers because it needs a uh, different sort of uh, expertise and post-op care. It's not just about the surgery, it is about before surgery, after surgery, the, the uh, like ICU setup and everything. So the entire team needs to grow together for any setup for that matter. So uh, if there's any way we can share our, our knowledge also, uh, so we'll be very much welcome to that. So it's, it's a complete myth. So if you ask me, are cancers hereditary? 
we answer is both yes and no because yes very few cancers are hereditary majority of the cancers that we come across especially of the head and neck so these as i say these are arising because of the lifestyle uh, uh, that we, we practice say, say some form of substance abuse is mostly responsible so these items they contain some carcinogens which is causing the cancer i mean so all cancers are occurring because of some genetic changes which is turning a normal cell into a cancer cell but is it hereditary majority of them are not hereditary some are like breast uh, so there some syndromes called say breast ovaries few of them colon cancers colorectal cancers they can be hereditary but majority of them are not so the most common ones that you come across majority of the cervical cancers they are not hereditary <coughs> the two things we're talking about here one is uh, surgical success rate one is the uh, survival so whenever we talk about a uh, cancer we talk in terms of something called overall survival so say after 5 years if i am treating 100 patients of esophageal cancer today how many of them will be alive after 5 years that is the rate we talk about that gives us an idea about how aggressive it is for example a thyroid cancer patient has an almost close to 100% survival of five years of life so after a thyroid cancer is treated surgery and some other treatments are there radioactive iodine etc most chances that it will be like almost cured for life in life but in the same way a colorectal cancer patient will have a much shorter five years of life it will be even after treatment and everything it will be around 50 or less percentage so that is if we talk about that in case of esophageal cancer we in stage 4 as dr shine was telling the five years survival is either not existent because no one lives till five years after it becomes stage 4 or uh, it will be very less like single digit numbers uh, with certain treatments because every person re uh, reacts a little differently to drugs some are very good response some don't have that much but when we are talking about cure that is basically stage 1 2 3 so there again depending on the stage the prognosis differs so uh, like for example if it is stage 1 it will be very high it will be around 80 90% percent five years survival which drops down to around 60 70 for stage 2 stage 3 again 40 to 50 so that varies between cancers like depending on how aggressive the cancer is so because will be different from wall bladder will be different from colon so there cannot be one single number to this that will be individual to every uh, every site Uh, coming to the success of surgery, if you tell, so uh, uh, that is a much shorter term we are talking about. That we wonder about the surgery and what are the chances that success is basically that the tumor is completely out is one thing, and the patient gets home well and goes home. So there we have very high success rates. Uh, like for colon, gastric, and all uh, surgeries, those are much lesser risk surgeries uh, compared to the chest cavity. so there it's uh, like very it is like we don't even talk about our life risk there okay there's like almost close to more than 99% will be the uh, success rate of surgery like that the surgery is done and the patient is going home fine okay so chances of complications do happen but they are mostly salvageable and the percentage is less to that extent thoracic surgeries have a little more chances of complications but even then the success rate is more than 95% for for our surgery of the esophagus and with the recent advances we now have much uh, like today morning when we were talking about uh, like even for esophagus cancer if you even understand this the food pipe is inside the chest so if you have to remove it you have to go inside the chest and so whenever you go there if it's a long cut through which you are going which normally open surgery what we call causes a lot of pain and post op complications don't you have to take deep breaths and whenever you take deep breaths it will be painful So you won't take deep breaths. That will cause problems with uh, pneumonia, etc. So now we have uh, thoracoscopic surgery. That is basically like laparoscopy, you know, for the abdomen. Similar, we put two, three holes in the chest, and we can remove the entire tumor. Uh, we are more advanced than that. We have robotic surgeries. So those are also similar, but uh, with much more precision. So those have made the surgery surgery much more safer in today's times. Say even if we compare it 10, 15 years back. So compared to that. Uh, surgeries are much more safe now and much lesser pain and complications in the post-op period.